The Single Life Season 4 Episode 2. Here we go. So this episode was kind of slow and I had a hard time focusing so I don't have that many notes. This might be a super super short recap. <laughs> also I was so happy this episode was only an hour long because the two hour episodes sometimes are rough sometimes they drag as much as i love the show my adhd just cannot handle a two-hour episode let's start with chantelle so it's the morning after and chantelle can't believe she kissed that 20 year old today is a new day we're right. gonna make some olive oil, we gonna Are we gonna make olive oil? they go to a winery or some winemaking place where this ginormous muscular hulky dude is supposed to be their tour guide his name is george he's like Woo, he's so big. We're gonna produce the olive oil with traditional way. We have to put some effort. Really? Yes. Chantel's feeling herself. She's twerking every chance she gets. Chantel, your booty is bouncing. <laughs> work, work. Check that in. Oh, hold on now. So a lot of former account to create, especially the females, feel very comfortable with us. Like we show them like uh, the clubs, everything, the nightlife. Do we really think Hulky George was the actual tour guide of the winery? Probably not. Because later that night, he meets up with Chantel and her crew at a nightclub. And he also brings a friend named Giannis. Now Chantel is drunky, drunkity drunk. She's filling the drinks. She's filling herself. She's filling the vibes. And Giannis is also getting drunkity drunk, feeling the vibes and feeling himself and feeling Chantel. So they go off to talk alone and Chantel really does not know how to flirt or talk to men because she brings up that she was married. Like, why are you bringing that up, girl? Have you ever been married? No, never. Good. Yeah. Yeah. But that's but long on, like, it's it so far behind me. Nobody needs to know. Like, you just met the dude. You don't even know what's going to happen. Like, anyway, they flirt a bunch. And then at the end of the night, they exchange numbers and leave the club. So that's that's all that happened. Okay, here, let me give you my number. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. See you later. We'll see you Let's go. Let's move on to Natalie. Natalie's still pissed off at Josh, so she decides to make him sweat a little by ignoring all of his calls. He calls and he calls and he calls and she finally answers and he apologizes and she accepts his apology. Okay, so here's a problem. Homegirl thinks they're going towards a relationship, but the reality is he's just there to hang out and have a good time. He's also aware that he's on a TV show about her love life. So as long as he wants to be on the show, he has to be her love interest. I think he likes her. He thinks she's hot and he's having a good time. He wants to be on the show, but definitely nowhere near settling down, being exclusive, being in a relationship or anything like that. And the problem is Natalie thinks they are. She shows me. She's my healing soul. <laughs> This girl is so head over heels for him. She likes him so much. The way she hugs him and straddles him and is all over him. Damn, I worry about the day he finally has to break it off with her. Because uh, she's going to find you, Josh. And she's going to cut off your dick. Josh picks her up to look at housing. And she's swooning. Oh, Josh, you big me up. And you get about me. Oh, Josh. I'm definitely relieved that Natalie and I were back on track, but it's always in the back of my mind that, you know, this could be like too good to be true. Too good to be true? What part of anything was good? They look at house number one. It's in a very good area, but she doesn't know if she can afford the rent. It's $21.50 a month for this one bedroom place. And Natalie thinks it's absolutely ridiculous that for the same amount of money, in Florida, you could get like a giant luxury house. Well, Natalie, that's the cost of living in California, okay? If you don't like it, then get out. Natalie asks the realtor, what are the requirements? Like, can I even get this place? And she says, you have to have really good credit. But Natalie doesn't have credit. So then the realtor's like, okay, well, Josh, you could be her guarantor. And if you have good credit, then, you know, she can get the place. And Natalie's like, will you do that, Josh? And he goes, uh, probably not. And she goes, oh, okay. Would you be my guarantor? 
Um, you have to see about that. <laughs> really? Okay. He's not really keen on that idea, and I don't blame him. That's like the normal thing. You know, they're not really in a committed relationship. They're not anything. They're just like buddies, basically, at this point. I just don't think like right now where we're at that, you know, we're ready to have joined anything. And I feel like this should be a sign, a big fat sign to Natalie about where these two stand in their relationship. You guys are not at all serious. And that's where things end with them. Now moving on to Veronica. She's at a farmer's market peeling a banana and eating it in slow-mo. Really, TLC, why did you make her do that? Why? It, it was so cringe. I hated it. So we all knew that she and Jamal were hooking up. They have a nine-year age gap. She's 36. He's 27. And I feel like that's fine because he's in his late 20s. It's not like she's 19 or he's 19 and the other one is, you know, 29 or whatever. So I think that's fine. I remember at the tell-all, Veronica found out Jamal had been sleeping with other women on top of her. Like she thought they were exclusive, but they weren't. <laughs> Are you two having sex with other people? Uh, yeah. yeah. And I guess after that, they decided to give exclusivity a try. According to her, Jamal's a great lover, but he sucks at communicating. I guess he can go on for days without texting her back. And I think that's an issue because if you're in a serious relationship, like if your girlfriend texts you something and you don't answer her back for a couple days. No, 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 no. It, it takes a few seconds to text someone back, especially your girlfriend. I'm more of a face-to-face -face kind of person. Uh, that's always been my vibe. Like when we're here, we're here. But Veronica takes it personally when I'm not available to her. And I can see maybe an insecurity of her overthinking like, oh, he just doesn't care to talk to me. Uh, but that's never been the case. After they had a lovely time together, Jamal goes back to San Diego. And so Veronica and Tim go to the singles event together for Tim. She wants him back in the dating game after being single for six months. Going out is not really my type of thing. I don't drink, I don't dance, and I'm just not a very sociable guy. Wow, I thought that was me talking. Tim sees a girl named Louisa, and it's a girl he actually matched with on a dating app, but they never got to meet in person. They just talked for a little bit and it fizzled out. But here they are in person, and she's 33, Colombian, and she's a working girly, so he doesn't have to worry about supporting her and her using him for money. He finally asks her out, and she accepts, so I'm very excited to see where this goes. Last, and obviously not least, we have our sweet, sweet Tyree. It's a night of Tyree's date with Tiffany. He buys a bouquet of roses for her. He goes to the restaurant, and he waits. Did you see yourself making the first move? I do kind of get the vibe from Tiffany that she likes, you know, the man to kind of, you know, be in charge and, and take, you know, initiative. But I think she should definitely make the first move because she um, uh, liked me first. <laughs> Honestly, I think he's way too shy to make the first move. And if he were to try, I think it would make a really awkward moment. And about a half hour goes by and she's still not there. She hasn't texted him. She hasn't called him. And I'm like, okay, the producers, the show wants us to think that she's not coming, but she's going to show. After waiting for 45 minutes, he's really nervous that he's about to get stood up. So he finally calls her and it goes to voicemail. Uh -huh. I'm like, please let this be a fake out. Please show up. Please show up. But then it shows the time and it's 810. So he's been waiting for a whole ass hour and I'm pissed. He's reminded of the time he went to meet Carmela and she ghosted him. And I swear, Tiffany better have a freaking good excuse. It took a while for me to, you know, get myself together mentally, you know, and want to actually go out and date again. So for this to happen, you know, on my first date, it's kind of like, like, damn, like, is it me? Honestly, why? Why did she have to ghost him? She seemed like she was kind of into him. She seemed like she wanted to have a good time. So why is she not there? I'm so sad for Tyre. Like, please, please find him someone good. Me. I'll go on the show. Oh my God, wouldn't it be so funny if you saw a girl on the show who sounded exactly like me and you were like, is that Poe? And you guys are all up in my comments like, oh my God, were you on this season of 90 Day Fiance? And I'm like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it's really me. Yeah, that'd be really funny. 
Well, that's pretty much the end of the recap for season four, episode two of The Single Life. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!